Young Show. Hello. Do you believe that pride is a vice or a virtue? Well, you'd be surprised at the differences of opinion on this. Tonight, we take you back to the year 1882 to meet Miss Penelope Ashley. Boots of lightning! Afternoon, Mary. Afternoon, Miss Mary. It displeases me greatly, child, to see you lollygagging about the halls like common trash. Afternoon, Miss Penelope. Afternoon, Edame. You look flush. I'm a bit disappointed, that's all. Auntie, Claude looked a little, well, untidy just now because he was on his way home from work. Edame, is our tea almost ready? If that water ever boils. Aunt Penny, I hope you don't think I meant to be ungrateful. The good Lord knows what would have happened to an orphan like me if you hadn't taken me in as your very own. Oh, no, Mary. You're a good child. As my blessed papa used to say to me, you got a bright glow inside you. Don't waste it lighting up dark corners. Get out where you belong. Compete with the stars. Oh, honey, I just don't want to lighten up the dark corners around here, that's all. Edna, get yourself another cup. I have news. Now then, when I was your age, oh, maybe a few years older, the proper thing for a finished young lady was for her papa to take her on a grand tour. Well, my darling Papa was planning to take me on the grand tour of Europe when the war broke out. Spoiled everything. So, as I'm way past due and you're just about ready, I was thinking maybe we should embark on our grand tour. Bolts of lightning, Aunt Penny, to Europe. That's right. And as Papa used to say, compete with the stars. But how, Auntie? Did you come into some family money? Oh, wait till I tell Claude. Please, Miss Mary. I have asked you not to mention the blacksmith's son's name again. I'm sorry, Auntie. High time I got you out of this squalor. I do believe. I do believe it was sent from the Lord. What? It was. It was sent from the Lord to get you out of this squalor and away from that blacksmith's son. Really, Aunt Penny? He's very nice and very polite. Oh. I know, I know all about that. Remember, Annetta? <laughs> Remember how very nice and sweet and polite Mr. Randolph Kirk could be, but Papa was on to him all right, oh, he was. Drink your tea, honey, before it gets cool. Mary, I believe I've told you some about Mr. Kirk. Yes, Auntie. He was visiting the Hamilton plantation. It was right next to ours. He was representing the Northern Mill who wanted to buy some of the Hamilton's cotton. So I saw a great deal of Mr. Kirk. Oh, he was nice. I liked him. But that was all. And then, one night he took me home after the Hamilton's goodbye party. Remember, Annette, I wore my pale green satin and lace and my mama's emeralds. Penny, I'd like a word with you. Well, surely. Won't you come in? I'll say goodbye now, Adamay. I'm going north in the morning. Good night, Mr. Kirk. Your papa's in there. He come home from the party with one of his headaches. You better keep your voices down. I will. Oh, poor dear papa. He has the most awful headache. I wanted a real goodbye from you. Mr. Kirk, you shouldn't have done that. It's all right. I forgive you. Penny, Penny. Please, my papa will hear you. Hang papa and marry me. I do believe you have imbibed in too much wine this evening. It's not the wine, Penny. It's you. Well, whatever do you mean? I sent her the jewels for this a month ago. A ring? Just came this morning. Penny, let's get married. 
Well, Mr. Kirk, I don't know what to say. Well, I, perhaps on your next visit here, we should get to know each other a little bit better. But right now, I, I don't know what to say. Right now, Penny, just say good night. Wear the ring as you sleep. Dream of me. I'll come by in the morning for your answer. Mr. Kirk, please. Uh... Papa. Papa. Papa, Mr. Kirk just proposed marriage to me. And he gave me this ring. But I don't love him, Papa. No, no. And I never give him any reason to believe that I did love him. Well, he, he did kiss me goodnight. Oh. But that's all, Papa. That's all, I swear. You are lady, Miss Penelope. I never doubted for a moment that his conduct toward you would be anything but gentleman. Thank you, Papa. That is not saying that he is a gentleman. He admired your jewels this evening a bit too openly. Yes, he did. Always before, he seemed so nice and polite. I still like him, and, and maybe I could learn to love him, but... Now get to bed, Miss Penelope. I will return Mr. Kirk's ring to him in the morning. But, Papa, mm -hmm. isn't it only polite that I, I say goodbye to him? Do you want to see him again? I don't know. In that case, I'll forbid your leaving your room tomorrow until I allow that you should. And that will not be until uh, after Mr. Kirk is well out of Atlanta. There's a glow about you, child. Don't waste it lighting up dark corners. Get out where you belong. Compete with the stars. Pleasant as you might think you're Mr. Kirk to be, he is destined to dwell in dark corners. Somewhere, daughter, there's a prince for you. Now, good night. Good night. Oh, Papa, mm -hmm. be kind to him. I will. <laughs> I have relayed my daughter's message. It is true I forbade her this last meeting. For well, she is not in love with you. But in her own words, she says she likes you. Like, Mr. Ashley? Like. Does your daughter go around kissing every man she only likes? One kiss? Mr. Ashley, do you think I sent all the way to Baltimore for this ring if there was only one kiss? I suspected from the first that you were no gentleman, Mr. Kirk. Now get out! Oh, Mr. Kirk! How dare you strike my father! Papa! Oh, Papa! Papa, dear, let me I've told you to leave my house. Not until I've had my say. Mr. Kirk, I believe you hurt my father. You ought to leave this house instantly. Do you understand? If I do, you'll never see me again. Those are very true words, Mr. Kirk. Then this is goodbye. And you'll think twice before leading someone on. Fetch my gun. No, no, Father, let it go. Let it be no. any worse of lead, that's the truth, Mr. Oh, Papa. I didn't lead him on. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, it's never been so humiliating in my life. Lift your head. No. Lift your head, you hear me? You're an Ashley. Be proud. What's a little blood? How could that scoundrel possibly humiliate you? Lift your head. Take my pride, my dear. It's your greatest heritage. Yes, Papa. Yes. No, Randolph Kirk was no gentleman. My Papa was right. The war broke out. The Yankees burned Ashley Hall to the ground. Everywhere I looked, all the beautiful sights ravaged. Poor Papa. Afterwards, I brought him up north where there would be no reminders. My baby. <laughs> You're right. 
That's all past. My news. Look here. Money for our tour. Auntie! Where, where did you get all that money? I found it. You found it? How wonderful! Where you find it? I found it right there in the street, right there in front of me. I tell you, it was heaven sent. Oh, no, honey, that ain't rightfully yours. Oh, of course it's not. I found it. Oh, no, that ain't right. That's somebody else's. Oh, honey, you've got to advertise. You've got to be honest. No, it's mine. I found it. It's going to get us out of this squalor. It's going to get Mary here the opportunity to marry well and to be proud. You take my pride, my dear. It's your greatest heritage. No, no, child. Your pride is your demon, Miss Ashley. And you pass it on to that baby like it was a virtue. It may. You may be excused. Oh, honey, I done left you to your dreaming too long. I didn't think it would do no harm. But now they're stealing to think about and the ways of this child. Edemy, did you hear me? You may be excused. Miss Ashley, I serve you, and it's my pleasure to do so. But my duty is to the Lord. And I ain't going to have you sell this child like your papa tried to sell you, all to feed that demon. Don't say that. Listen to me, Miss Ashley. You done told that story so many times. Till you done lost the truth. Now, I love you. You know that. Listen to the story the way it really happened. This is the truth. And it's high time it was spoken, Miss Mary's presence. From the first you and Mr. Kirk set eyes on each other, I never saw two creatures so silly out of their heads about one another. Now, at the Hamilton's goodbye party, you danced every dance with him. <laughs> It is true that after the party, he's seen his home. But, honey, he couldn't have admired your jewels in no ungentlemanly way. Your papa done sold your mama's jewels long before that to pay off his gambling debts. Goodbye, Mr. Randolph. We sure gonna miss you. Goodbye, Edda May. I'll be back soon. And would you leave us alone for a minute? Well, I'll leave you alone, but I give you fair warning. I'm gonna be watching from the top of the stairs. <laughs> you see, I'm going to ask the lady to marry me. I hope she do. Now, you keep your voices down. Your papa's in there. Oh, darling. You might have told me first. She's a part of you. A very dear part. I never knew my mother. Edemay reared me. A very commendable job she did. Oh, darling. <laughs> When will you be coming back? In a month. No more. Oh. Seems so long. Till then, Penny. Wear this and think of me. Oh. It's beautiful. It's my mother's. Oh, put it on, please. This ring? I do wear it. If only this were our wedding day. If this moment we were truly married. I love you. And I'm afraid. Afraid, then? Yes. I won't come back, Hush. Oh, no. No. I'm sure you. It's... It's the war talking. And, and Papa and... Let me tell him. Oh, no. Please. But why, Penny? Because... It's best I prepare him tonight, and then, and then tomorrow morning, you can come and ask for my hand in a proper manner. And then you'll be back in a month, and we'll be married, won't we? Won't we, darling? Yes. And right away. Oh. <gasps> I love you, Penny. Mm.
Papa? morning to ask you for my hand. You love me? Well, of course I love you, Papa. You love this house? Yes, of course. Are you proud of the name you bear? Yes, Papa. Daughter, we need you. You need me? Permit me to put my cards on the table. That is a very bad joke. I've already put altogether too many cards on the table. Child, I'm in debt. I'm in debt to some very ugly men in New Orleans. We've got to get away on that trip. Darling, you must marry well. But, Papa... There's nothing left to sell but the house. And me. To marry well does not mean to marry without love. But I'm already in love with Randolph Kirk. Forget him. He's a messenger boy for a northern cotton mill. He'll never be anything else. I can't forget him. Forget him. I can't. I can't. Now, you listen to me. Papa, please don't. You've never done anything but take all your life. You've never had to work and you've always had the best. You sat back and enjoyed the privileges of the Ashley name. Well, Miss Penelope Ashley, this is your hour. You've got to save me, yourself, the house, most important of all, our good name. I'd rather die than disgrace that name. If my debts are exposed, I will see to it that I'm dead shortly thereafter. Papa, don't stay there. Go to your room. Stay there till I say you may leave. That will not be until after Mr. Kirk is well out of Atlanta. Oh, please. First, give me that silly ring. I'll return it to him in the morning. No. You want your father's death on your head? Oh, no, no. Then give it to me. Don't you dare leave your room and I'll say you can, you hear? Good morning, sir. I've come to ask... Save your speeches. The answer, as you probably guessed, is no. Now, you will please get out. I would like to see Penny. My daughter's name is Penelope, and you may not see her. You are drunk, sir. Would you put that firearm away, please? You trying to insult me? No. Merely trying to avoid a serious accident. Oh, oh. <coughs> Papa, what is it? Papa. Papa. Please, give me the gun. Please, Papa. Give me the gun. I told you to stay in your room. Oh. 
Now you. Get out. Not without Penny. Please, Ron, don't go. He'll kill you. He'll kill you. All right. I'll go, but I won't leave Atlanta till you contact me. You'll leave right now. I promise you. Oh, please. I'm sorry, but I can't marry you now. My papa's already made other marital arrangements. I'm already engaged. I don't believe you, Penny. But it's true. Get out! I'll stay in town till I hear from you. What your papa saw to it that no word ever got to Mr. Kirk. And after a few weeks, the threat of war drove him north. And that's the gospel. Ain't you know, Miss Penelope? Yeah. Ain't you know. And there's more truth. The Yankees didn't burn Ashley Hall. The sheriff finally took it. And we didn't come north because Mr. Ashley couldn't stand the sorry sights of the Southland. The New Orleans gamblers drove us north. And there was nothing but misery. No. Tell her, no. child. Tell her that she's got nothing to be proud of but her own good deeds. It's not true. It's not. Yes. It is true. That's the way it happened, I guess. I don't remember too clearly anymore. Now I got nothing left. Nothing. Oh, my foolish baby. <laughs> now that you've got that demon off of your back, you can stand tall and live on. <sighs> live on it. Oh, I, I suppose I have been lying. But I did believe it. I wanted to believe it. You're right, though. The good Lord never would have sent me money to take this poor child and marry her off just so I could have a better life. Live honest, Mary. Yes. Where are you going? I'm going to the newspaper office to place an advertisement. Well, I'll go with you. No, thank you, Helen. I can manage now. And Penny? And, uh, you best not call me Penny no more. Because that was his name for me. And we are through with pretending. Hmm? <laughs> I came in answer to an ad I read in the paper concerning a sum of money found by uh, Miss Ashley. Yes, I'm Miss Ashley. Uh, have you some way of identifying the money as yours, sir? Oh, I didn't lose the money. I beg your pardon? Years ago, I visited Atlanta. Penny? Penny, don't you know me? Randolph Kirk. <laughs> when I read the ad, well, I, well, I just had to know if it was my Miss Ashley. Would you like to come in? Come in. Surely, We're just about to have tea. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. St. John, Chapter 8. Well, good night, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>